Hey, Way fam, thanks for tuning in. We pray that today's message impacts your life. Let's get ready for this service. I am definitely so glad to see every one of you here. And what we're here to do is expose ourselves to the perspective, perspective and truth of God. There's an attack, and I'll tell you where the attack is. It's in our mindset. The biggest battle that we're facing is not coronavirus because no one even has it in right now, known causes in the whole San Bernardino County. Matter of fact, put that, do you have the, the, the thing up? The, the, the map up. You guys have the map in the back? All right, Ventura County has one. Los Angeles County has 40. Orange County has nine. Riverside County has 12. But there's some weird. The biggest county in the whole United States of America, there's not one case. You know, I said, why? Well, this is important to us because San Bernardino last week was the most dangerous city in California. And this week, we're the safest city in California. <laughs> come on, if anybody should be having church, come on, it should be the San Bernardino County Church celebrating. So right now, that's, that's, the, that's where we're at. That was up to, up to date till today. We're talking about fear. And we need to learn how to overcome this. And I pray that you learn how to overcome this for the rest of your life. And the reason you need to learn how to overcome fear, because there's always a reason to be fearful. And you could become a fearful person or a faith-filled person. Now, you're full of fear. This is going to happen. You'll never take action in the places you're supposed to take action. You'll never fulfill your purpose because in front of your destiny, in front of your purpose, there's always a thought of failure, a thought that it's not going to work out, a thought that you could end up brokenhearted. And if you have fear, this will, will stop you from doing. It'll cause you to forfeit your life. You could have, but you didn't. Right now we have a church, right now, that's full of people with faith. What you've done is you've exercised your faith today and you're in the house of God. Now, I'm not saying that you didn't have to overcome fear to come here. I had to overcome fear to even do the video I did yesterday. Because I know there would be possible backlash, but if God said it, then I have to say it. And one of the reasons that God told the disciples after he resurrected from the dead, he had a private meeting with them and he met with them for 40 days. But on his final meeting, he told them, he goes, before you go out there and try to change the world, I want you to go into a specific room, the upper room. And I want you to wait there until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And they waited there and they were all baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the purpose of being filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit was to have the boldness to carry out the assignment. It would give them the courage to face danger and threats, pain and suffering without retreat. So one of the tactics of the enemy, biggest tactics of the enemy are fear and doubt. Because as long as God's people are full of fear, this is what won't happen. They won't take action. They won't speak up. They won't come together. So fear is a tactic of the enemy from the beginning to stop Christians from moving or progressing forward. It was used with Jesus. It was used with every single one of the apostles. They didn't go anywhere without threats. We're gonna put you in prison. We're gonna kill you. We're gonna beat you. You're gonna to have to suffer for preaching what you're preaching. And they would say this, just shut up and we'll stop chasing you. We'll stop persecuting you. What was the threat? It was fear, it was intimidation. Shut up. We are not gonna shut up. We are the church of God and we have an assignment to speak up, even when it's not comfortable. You guys understand that? Even, even if, it's, if it's not going with the social norms. But there's always a reason to fear. A matter of fact, 
in 2000, how many were alive in 2000? Raise your hands. How many were not alive in 2000? Praise the Lord, you little old young chap. But if you don't remember 2000, um, there were songs like, I'm gonna party like it's 1999. Prince used to sing that. And he used to sing, we're going to party till it's 19, like it's 1999. Because there was like a fear that at 2000, that everything would fall apart, that, that it would be the end of the world. And they call it Y2K. And we thought everything was going to be destroyed. Computers would be shut down, electricity would be shut down. And when it turned 2000, people were freaking out. That was a coronavirus of 2000. In 2001, it was anthrax is going to kill us all. They were putting anthrax in mailboxes, and you, you were scared to touch the mail. You'd go to the mail with gloves. In 2002, it was the West Nile, my, my Nile virus is going to kill us all. In 2003, it was SARS is going to kill us all. In 2006, it was E. coli is going to kill us all. In 2008, it was a financial collapse is going to ruin every single one of us. In 2009, it was a swine flu, a, a virus that was going to kill us all. Flu, it was flu, it was another flu. 2012, the Mayan calendar predict the world ending. In 2013, the North Koreans are going to start World War III. In 2014, Ebola virus is going to kill us all. In 2015, ISIS is going to kill us all. In 2016, Zika virus is going to kill us all. And 2020, coronavirus is going to kill us all. And all I'm saying is every year there's something to freak out about. And I'm not saying that there's not real diseases, that there's not real problems, but our response is very important. When you're going through a trial and tribulation, your response is going to determine how that fight is going to end. We don't turn, put, tuck our tails in and we run. We praise God in the middle of our battles. We praise him in the valleys. We praise him in the mountaintops. And this is what David says. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. What he was saying, situations might change, but my response never changes because my God never changes. My God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means he conquered that and he'll conquer this. And when Jesus resurrected, when he was on the cross, he said this, it is what? Finished. So now, what's really killing us? The truth is, fear is killing us. You know, it's time to turn off the TV and start praying again. Someone asked me the other day, a young man from the church, he goes, how come we don't see the miracles that we used to see back in the day day? And he goes, he says, there's something wrong with the church? I go, no, there's not something wrong with the church. I go, this is the problem. People aren't desperate. Because desperation causes miracles. It's time for us to get desperate again. And maybe that's what's happening with our society right now. It's causing a desperation. The doctors don't have the answer. Ralph's don't have the answer. Walmart don't have the answer. Disneyland don't have their answer. Morongo don't have the answer. Where do I need to go? I need to go back to the real answer. And his name is Jesus. And where do I find him? In the church. So how do we overcome fear? Number one, I'm just going to be three quick points. Reject fear and trust God. Say it with me. Reject fear. What is fear? Reject it. I don't accept it. It's a distressing emotion aroused by impending danger, evil, pain, apprehension. It's anticipation of, ad of adversity and misfortune. It's acceptance of receptivity to information without passing judgment on its validity. Often without complete comprehension. This is what he's saying. We become fearful and apprehensive when we start receiving information, just receiving it without any judgment. You know what that means? Not every word and thought that comes to your mind, you're supposed to just go ahead and receive. We got to learn how to guard our thoughts and guard our emotions. When a thought of worry comes, don't receive it. Because you know what worry comes? It comes with images. When you think of the coronavirus, what comes to your mind? Do you see yourself sick? Do you see yourself dying? Are you scared? Because not every thought 
you're just supposed to go ahead and receive. There are certain thoughts, and we get used to this. I reject that. I rebuke that thought. My kids won't end up like that. My marriage won't end up like that. My finances won't end up like that. My life will not end up like that. I rebuke this thought of danger and failure in my life. My future is not going to be a failure. My future is going to be a success. My future is going to be powerful. My future is going to be full of ministry and abundance. Reject? Someone say reject it. So... We reject fear. Why? Because God commands us to reject it. In Isaiah 41, 10 says this, do not fear anything. Do not fear what? For I am with you. Who's with us? Who's with us? Coronavirus is not with you. He's not even in the county. But the problem is he's with you when he's in your thoughts and he's in your mouth. Some of us have talked more about the coronavirus than we've mentioned scriptures our whole lives. Coronavirus this, coronavirus that, coronavirus this. You study coronavirus, you know it's so good. You know how long it lasts, you know what's going on with. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be educated, on, but be careful that you're not more educated on your problem than you are on your solution. So he says, do not fear anything. Do not fear what? What should we fear? Nothing. Nothing. For I am with you. Do not be afraid. He just says it again. Do not be what? Afraid. Is that a command? Yes. So should you ever be afraid? No. Should, should you ever fear? No. Why? God says, I'm with you. Who's with you? God. And if, who's, if he's with you, who could come against you? No. That's why I have no problem going into the darkest hood I remember me and the staff we were in the, we were in the hood in San Bernardino and we're driving and as we're driving in the hood some guy has a girl by and the fence and he's beating her up so I stopped the car we act like police I, I even de deepened my voice a little bit I go hey what are you doing he looked at me and he just started crying he goes, are you Pastor Marco? I go, yes, I am. Get over here right now. And you go home. I told the girl to go home and got him over here. He just started crying, repenting. That was, that was the same day. We're driving in another hood because we're thinking about starting a church. And when we're, when we're thinking about starting a church, we go to the worst hoods we could find. The one that every other church and every other person is trying to run from, we're running to. It's just our call. Not everybody's supposed to do this. We are. We are. And if you're full of fear, you can't do it. And I remember, I remember going into the, we go around the corner, same day, we're going around the corner, a gang fight, crips and bloods on the streets. And I told my staff, get out of the car. We're going to break this up. So we get out of the car. Hey! I'm the pastor of the way we're allowed. This has to stop right now. That's what we did. And Pastor Rob's looking at like, this is what we're doing. And people were just surprised. They stopped fighting. And I go, you go over there, you go over there in the name of Jesus. I said that kind of cra crazy stuff. Right? So pastor, you could have died. I don't care. For me to live is Christ, for me to die is gain. We gotta get, come on, we gotta get this spirit back of authority that I have an assignment and when God tells me to do it, I'm going to do it. And I, rem I remember the other guy went the other way and now everybody's looking at each other and one guy is running straight at me. And I go, oh man. And he's trying to run straight at me because he's trying to get to another person behind me. So he's running and he's vicious. And I look at him and I went like that. And all of a sudden he couldn't cross me. Like he, there was an invisible line. He was all mad, but he couldn't cross the line. 
He couldn't cross the line of the authority of God. He couldn't cross the line of the Spirit of God. He couldn't cross the line of the angels of God. All I'm saying, it's time to have more faith in the invisible than you do in the visible. I remember that. So, what it says. Do not be afraid. What? For I am your God. You know what he's saying? I'm ruling over your life. And you know what that means? Nothing can touch you unless I give it permission. As a matter of fact, you're not even going to die a day before your time because I have an appointment for your death and I'm the one that determines that. Just follow me. Anybody receiving this? Come on. We're going to grow. Come on. As a matter of fact, this is one of our biggest nine, nine o'clock services we've had in a long time. Next week, let's come back with thunder. Let's come back with power. Let's come back with more people. Look at this. Look at this. I, I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured, I will help you. You know what he said? I got your back. Why are you focusing on the enemy when I'm with you? You should be focusing on what's for you, not what's against you. And if I'm for you, stop tripping because you have some backup. That's why when I grew up in the hood, there'd be little cholos with big mouths. Have you ever met a little cholo with a big mouth, a little gangster, like a little puny gangster? With, oh, what's up, Ese? What's up, vato? You know? A little vato, like, a, and you could just, ah. Uh. One punch will buckle them. But you would never mess with them. And the reason you didn't mess with them, not because he was powerful, you knew his family. That's why you didn't mess with him. He's one of them. Don't mess with him. You mess with him. You have the whole Mexican mafia on you. So you see this little vato baby gangster slapping people. Like, oh, dale vato. How come no one's fighting? Because they know his family. All I'm saying, you should know what family you belong to. You should know what hood you belong to. You should know what's your backup. And this one, that's why you should have a big mouth and big faith because God says, I'm with you. I'll strengthen you. I'll help you. No, no weapon formed against you shall prosper because it can't defeat me. Sickness is no match. Matter of fact, check this out. Death is no match. You kill me, I end up in heaven. What now? So you're going to threaten me, I'm going to go home? Do what you need to do. We got to stop taking on the mindset of the world. We're thinking about it. We're thinking fearful. We're acting like sissies. We're acting like we have no backup. God says, I am with you. You know what this scripture is talking about? It's talking about this. Stop talking about your enemies. Stop talking about your problems and start talking about me. You know why some of us are overwhelmed right now? Because your verbiage is full of coronavirus. And it's not just the coronavirus sickness, your coronavirus workplace, your coronavirus marriage, your coronavirus finances, your coronavirus insecurities. What it means is that you're obsessed with your problem instead of being obsessed with your solution. Come on, let's praise God. Come on, let's praise God. God's with me. He'll help me. He's going to strengthen me. And that's full show. Look at this. It looks like we're just going to read one scripture. I'm going to have to do a series on this whole thing. Look at this. Assuredly, I will help you. What he's saying in hood, for show, (laughs) I will help you. For show, I got your back. (laughs) 
and then, and then the hood, for show, for show? And then Jesus said, for show. <laughs> we should be some for show people. So why are you smiling? Can't you see the world's falling apart? No, my world's not falling apart because I belong to a whole nother kingdom and I got some backup. A matter of fact, these are the best days of my life. Light shines best in darkness. I'm ready to become everything that God called me to be. I've been prepared, been prepared for this season, for such a time as this. God has set me up. I've been prepared for 2020, coronavirus, or whatever else comes my way because God for show is going to help me. So we, we should be for show people. Next week, for show will be their pastor, for show. If they shut down this building, somehow the sheriff's coming and they shut down the building, it don't matter. We get 12,000 people meeting in Power 12 groups and homes. And then you invite your friends, for show. And then when we finally come back here, the church isn't big enough because we should grow. Come on, we should grow in adversity. We should not shrink in adversity. This is what, see, adversity tests your real faith. We don't find out what a church is made of, a group of people are made of, until they're going through some tough times. This time, come on, these times, it's time for the church to be the church. Praise the Lord. Look at this. I will certainly take a hold of you. I will certainly take a hold of you with my righteous hand. You know what he's saying is? You don't have to worry about this. You're worrying about something getting a hold of you. How can they get a hold of you if I got a hold of you? Ain't nobody going to mess with my kids while I'm there. I, I, I got this. I remember there was a guy trying to break in our house. Uh, it, was, it was a few a month ago, a year ago, trying to break in our house, like literally through the front door, banging on our door. I go, girls, go in the back room and bring me the bat. <laughs> so I, I, the guy's trying to break through the front door. I go, bro, you don't want to come into this house. It's not going to be good for I, It was more like this. Bro! You don't want to come in this house. It's not going to be good for you. <laughs> what a shame would it have been that I would have had my wife answer that door. And all God is saying, you don't even have to answer it. I'll answer it. The battle is not yours. The battle is mine. And what he's saying, I got you. I got a hold. I'm holding you. Who's holding your future? Who has your, come on, who's holding your life? So why are y'all scared then? I know you ain't. Because you're here, you ain't scared. In the internet, they ain't scared either. They're watching right now, and everybody's faith is being built right now. As a matter of fact, it, next week, if you're on the internet, you can make, make it here. Let's be here. Let's invite some friends. We're getting ready for Easter. We're planning for Easter. We're not planning to shut it down. We're planning to have the biggest CC we've ever had. Come on. This is going to be a place of healing and salvation. We're not going to cancel the plans of God to save souls. Let's finish the scripture. I will take a hold of you. I will what? No, I will certainly, again, for show, take a hold of you with my righteous right hand. A hand of justice, a hand of power, a hand of victory, and a hand of salvation. He goes, when I touch you, it's going to be power, victory, and salvation. None of that describes a defeated life. None of that describes sickness. None of, come on, none of that describes, come on, us losing. It, it talks about victory. And I'm not saying that we're not going to go through stuff, but I know this, you're going to get through stuff. There's a lot of stuff happening, but this is what I'm saying. Let's focus on our Lord. Let's focus on, our, on his power. Let's sign up for a P12. Let's be building proof. And the reason we want you to join a P12, because if building shuts down, we have, an, we have an underground organization ready to go. 
We got an underground organization. You cannot stop the Wayward World Outreach because we have a network. And this virus is not going to shut down our system. You guys get that? And then we're giving online. That's the purpose. You can't shut down our finances. We're going to make sure we're going to continue doing ministries. That's done. We're going to keep on going forward. That's what it's all about. Are you guys ready? Come on. To, uh, come on. Are you ready to... Come on, are you ready to talk to your, the people at your job about faith and who your God is? They need it. And I want to mention one last thing. Um, could you show a picture of the baby? I want to show this picture of a baby real quick. Show a picture of a baby. I want to see. That's my, that's my grandson right there. My daughter just had him on Friday. Look at him. He cute. He's a, he's a cute one. So, Abriana, I want you to take this out. Abriana, when she was three years old, she came down with leukemia. And they weren't sure she was going to live. It was one bad report after another bad report after another bad report. And I remember when the doctors came in and told us my oldest daughter, my only daughter had cancer and they weren't guaranteeing me anything. I told, Lisa just started crying and the doctor left the room. And I told Lisa, go, come here, honey, look me in the eye. And I look Lisa in the eye with her tears flowing. And I go, honey, we're prepared for this. God's not going to give us more than we can handle. And I'm excited to see what God is going to do. Come on, mama. And I wiped her tears. And I knew my next assignment was to go into my little, little Abriana's room. She was three years old. And I go, Mama, I've read you a lot of Bible stories. And this is what I told her, exact words. We're going to ask God for help. I will certainly help you. We're going to ask God for help. For sure. And I go, baby. I go, honey, when we ask God for help, she had hardly no energy. I go, what is he going to do? And then she says, Daddy, he's going to help. I go, Mama, that's true. He's going to help. Okay? And I prayed for her. And today, 27 years, 24 years later, not only is she alive, she's giving birth to my first grandchild. Come on. The first boy in, the, in, our, in our family. God is good. I want church, I want to let you know, we, we love you. We're family. Let's keep going forward. And let's come out of this with more souls, lives being transformed. Go out there and be the minister God called you to be. And you know what that means? Just love people right where they're at. Don't run from them. Run to the problems. Run to the emergencies with the love and the hope of Jesus Christ. Pastor Robert, can you please close this out?